In this video, we shall look at an enhancement to the Zool project that makes use of polymorphic types and method overriding. We shall see that inheritance allows us to introduce a new room type with very little impact on the existing game. However, we shall also see that this very feature brings a degree of danger that should not be ignored. A variation on the example we use here is covered in the chapter, where we discuss the implementation of a transporter room. Here we shall implement a slightly different type of room, but the approach will be similar. The chapter discusses alternative ways to introduce rooms with non-standard behaviour, and the conclusion of the discussion is that inheritance offers the best approach for the transporter room. Recall that the Zool project is a text-based adventure game that allows a player to move between rooms using directions such as north, south, east and west. In this version we've added a new command to the Zool Better project. The command Rooms provides a list of the name of each room and its short description. This has been implemented by storing each room object in a hash map that's indexed by the room's name. The list is printed by the list rooms method. For this video we want to introduce a type of room into the game that behaves differently from normal rooms. In the chapter this is illustrated with the idea of a transporter room that moves the player randomly between the other existing rooms. The chapter discusses the alternatives for introducing this sort of room and ultimately concludes that inheritance offers the best approach. Here we shall introduce a type of room that actually causes the room network to expand dynamically. The idea is that a player will be able to leave such a room in any direction. If the room does not have a predefined exit in the chosen direction, then a new room is created automatically and linked in that direction. We shall call this type of room an expanding room. Any room created by an expanding room will also be an expanding room. As a consequence, the network of rooms has the potential to expand infinitely. Rather than repeating the discussion of alternative approaches that's covered in this chapter, we shall go straight ahead and implement expanding room as a subclass of room. In this first step, we've added expanding room as a subclass of room, but it contains no overriding functionality and therefore behaves exactly like the existing rooms. In the create rooms method of game, we've created a single expanding room object and given it the name annex. In the set exits method, we've linked it to the north of the theatre. For the next step, we want to indicate to the player that there are exits in every direction from an expanding room. This will require our first step of overriding behaviour inherited from room. We note that there are two methods in room that determine what gets printed when a player enters a room, get long description and get exit string. However, we note that get exit string is private, whereas get long description is public. Private methods are not overridden in subclasses so we would have to change its visibility if we want to override it. Raising it from private to protected would be the obvious way to do this. However, one of our intentions in this video is to try to minimize the impact of introducing the new class on the existing classes. So we will override get long description, which is already public, so that we don't have to make any changes to the room class. The overriding version of get long description calls get short description to access the text of the description field and then does not call get exit string at all. Rather, it prints out that there are exits in every direction. So, now we have to implement the distinctive functionality of this type of room. The idea is that if the player asks to go in a direction that does not already have a room linked to it, then a new room will be created to go in that direction. The game object obtains the exit from a room by calling its getExit method, so we have to override that in expanding room. Firstly, we have to find out if there is already an exit in the chosen direction, so we call the method in the superclass that's in the process of being overridden. If there is no exit, then we have to create one.
We shall describe this new room as an extension of the annex, but note that every expanding room that is added dynamically will have the same description. Next we link from the current room to the new room. We also want to provide a way to return to this room, so we add back as the direction to get back here. This also illustrates that it really is the case that there is an exit in every direction. Whatever string has been passed in as a parameter becomes the description of the exit direction. At the end of the method we return what will be either a pre-existing room or the one we've newly created. Now we can try it out. Notice that the only way for a player to find their way out of this dynamically expanding network of rooms is to go back from each one until the original annex is reached. However, if the original annex were indistinguishable from its extensions, then it would be almost impossible for a player to find their way out once they'd gone a few levels deep. We've successfully introduced a new type of room into the Zool game, with minimum impact on the existing classes. The only change we had to make was to create an initial expanding room and add it into the network. Thereafter, no classes were changed, the game just worked. All this was achieved through polymorphism of the room class and method overriding in the expanding room class. Inheritance is clearly a very powerful tool for program development. However, before we congratulate ourselves too much on a fine piece of work, we should consider one inadvertent consequence of the changes we made. Recall that the game has a rooms command to list out all the rooms. If we try that now, we see that only the initial set of rooms is listed. None of the rooms created dynamically appear there. While we might dismiss this observation as being a fairly obvious consequence of the changes, it does illustrate a very important point about inheritance. Clearly, the game class was originally written without prior knowledge of the possibility for expanding rooms. In the form we started with, the game class implemented a form of contract with respect to the rooms command. This contract was that it would give the player a list of all the rooms in the game. As we saw earlier, all the starting room objects were stored in a hash map at the start of the game, and the contract was implemented via iteration over the map in the list rooms method. Now that we have expanding rooms, we can see that the map of rooms becomes out of date as soon as a new room is created dynamically. The player cannot now get a full list of rooms, because the map doesn't have access to these new rooms. In effect, the introduction of expanding room violates the contract of the game class to list all the rooms. In order to restore the terms of that contract, an expanding room should register a new room with a game object each time it creates one. Clearly this requires more significant changes than we had thought to make. This illustrates one of the primary dangers of inheritance and polymorphism. A new subclass piggybacks on the existing interface and functionality of its superclass but it has the ability to make subtle changes to that functionality through overriding. While the introduction to an existing setup may appear to be relatively painless, other classes that interact via polymorphism with only the supertype are unlikely to have anticipated nuances introduced by particular future subclasses. There is a danger, therefore, that unwritten assumptions made about object behavior might no longer apply in the presence of new subclasses. This is something that always needs to be borne in mind when using inheritance in a project. In summary, we've seen the power of inheritance and method overriding to allow us to introduce new functionality to an existing project. On the surface, the new functionality required minimal changes to the existing classes. However, we've also seen some of the hidden dangers of inheritance and its potential to break both implicit and explicit assumptions in the original code. These dangers must always be borne in mind when using inheritance.